No. You can't, Norchan. <laughs> Partially stuffed lunch boxes. They have sticker sheets in them. Partially stuffed. Partially stuffed. All partially stuffed. They all should have sticker sheets in them. If you find any that don't, let me know. <laughs> Recording right now? I am. Don't worry about it. Act natural. Inside all of these, go one of these. And then... And a sticker will go on. And then... And the, it doesn't the, matter. Keep them in order, as usual. I'll get you a... Keep them in order because you're trying to... Because I have to keep track of people's nicknames. Names. Uh, just, which are in a document in order. Yeah, you can begin. I am beginning. Be careful not to. Docs ourselves or anybody else. my friends everything was going so well and then so the problem that I just ran into is that the Cricut paper these things these cutting mats that I have uh, are light grip and I've been using them and abusing them and the problem is is they've now become very 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 light grip where there's really not a lot of adhesive left on the mats and this is not normally a terrible problem because if you tape down the corners then usually the paper can kind of stick to it enough to kind of finish the cutting that needs to happen but clearly clearly uh it is not sticky enough to continue cutting these for now i have ordered more but they're not going to arrive until like next monday or something typical so right now I'm just gonna skip ahead to actually assembling the prints. I'm also just getting kind of tired of this and I have so, so many more to cut. I had uh, 27 pages to do, I think, which is because there's 106 people that need them. And I'll get as many done as I have printed and then ship those out to probably the international destinations just so that they have a chance to get there in slightly less time. <laughs> ah, so it goes.
Okay, so I have arranged the international mail separately because I have 26 assembled um, prints. And please tell me these aren't super cute. Oh, and also I wanted to say, I don't normally use this kind of amount of packaging in these parcels that I'm shipping out, but in this particular case, it was the best call. I really want them to arrive without falling apart or being damaged, so please don't give me a hard time about them being wrapped in plastic. I know I don't make a habit of it. I'm gonna have to tackle the rest of the assembly later next week, which always stinks because it's nice to kind of like, especially when I'm doing a project like this where there's a lot of assembly, there's a lot of steps, there's kind of like a production line to everything to just bang it all out in one or two days. But it does mean that I will have more time to do other stuff today and tomorrow. But the last steps are to put these into these, to write the thank you notes for these, to seal them up, to stamp them, and then they will be ready to ship tomorrow. Hello, hello everyone, welcome to the next day. I still have to go out and get some stamps for those parcels, that'll be the next thing that I do. But I wanted to record this Q&A section to the video. So in lieu of the actual questions, I have consolidated all of the types of questions that I received because there was obviously a lot of overlap between the stuff that people were curious about. And I have two categories that we're going to talk about. The first is general questions, the second is production. Without further ado. <laughs> Why did I start the sticker club? I don't really remember, to be honest with you. Five years ago was a long time. I started my Patreon because I was live streaming at the time on Twitch and I wanted to find a way to convert those supporters there on Twitch to supporters um, across my social media presence as a whole. And I think it was the audience's idea, frankly. I think they were the ones that were asking me to do it. And so I was like, yeah, okay. And why did I put a sticker club in? I guess I just thought it would be fun and it is fun. It also allows me to offer something that's a little bit more tangible through the subscription club because I think I would have struggled and would now still struggle to know what to share as content on Patreon if it wasn't for the stickers being sent out being a large part of what I offer there. How do I come up with my ideas slash themes? This is a bit nebulous, honestly. I've always joked that when I come up with an idea, the best way to come up with an idea is to take one thing you like and another thing you like and just squish them together. So that's what I did with Fashion Cats, Fashion Plus Cats. I can take you through some of the themes from 2022. The January was cute critters plus tattoos. February was crows plus fashion. March was a little bit different. It was cryptid seeker society. So it was like I wanted to do cryptids, but then I kind of wanted to put a twist on it. So it was like more of a narrative kind of world that I was bringing people into. You see what I mean? Like it just kind of try and take a base idea that at its core is something people can relate to and then adding a little bit of extra oomph on top of it. The one that I did for November was just mushrooms basically. I called it Fungi Forest but I was really just interested in exploring mushrooms so that one was one that was like really simple in its concept and scope. What the hell am I doing this month? Oh yeah this month is the complete opposite end of the spectrum where I'm doing this murder mystery theme and that one was fun because I had been wanting to do something that was kind of true crime related for a while and I actually should have mentioned this when I started talking but I do a poll on Patreon most of the time and I give like three to four different options to the patrons and they can kind of vote and choose which one they like the most and this time they voted for this murder mystery theme and I was really excited but I was like okay, what does that mean, murder mystery? How do I translate that into a sticker sheet, into a bunch of products for the big lunch club? And it took a lot of thinking. During all that process, I eventually figured out that 
it was going to be a sticker sheet where like the cat did it that was kind of like the joke the twist on the sticker sheet because otherwise if the box is too big then i feel the work suffers so if you can make that box just the right size box being like the scope of the theme then you can find your best ideas by restricting it just a little bit more is variety better or do i follow what people respond well to for me this has always been a 50 50. there are months where i know that the theme that i've chosen doesn't resonate with people as well as other themes and i want to continue to explore different things and not keep it like too too specific but specific works for a lot of people and i think it is more reliable if as a creator you enjoy doing things kind of repetitive specifically it's not something that i do enjoy so instead i'm jumping all over the place and i've always said that the one thing that brings my work together is color and so even when i'm exploring all of these different themes the color palettes come back and make it still scream like art by tuna and then there's usually cats involved in some way shape or form <laughs> but to answer the question more specifically no i do use the information that i get from seeing how people respond to stuff to gently inform decisions that i make but at the end of the day I try and just do things that I enjoy, that I can stand behind, and that I think other people will enjoy too. How do you generate interest and promote your sticker club? <laughs> this is a tough one because at the end of the day, I really do think that you need to have some sort of audience before you're going to sell this kind of product. Like starting a club isn't something you can do from zero. You want to be able to show that you have a track record of producing good content uh, and following through on your promises because a big part of what a subscription club is is a promise to your subscribers that you're going to be shipping things out on time you're going to be packaging things up well that they can expect a quality like a level of quality and a standard from what they're going to receive and you have to have that trust with your audience in order for them to trust you with like you know ten dollars a month so that being said, that's like the number one thing is focus on creating your platform, wherever it might be, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, somewhere else, street corner, I don't mind. Like how cute would that be if you were just walking down the street and someone was like standing there with like a little sticker stall? Like I know you're not allowed to, but it would be so cute. I, I want to live in that reality. So do the work to build up the platform and then when you choose to monetize it through a sticker club or this kind of goes to even like just shop sales advice generally that was a great sentence promoting your work is like the way i see it is nobody is going to promote your work for you you are the only person who you can rely on to tell people what it is that you do so don't feel ashamed of doing it i try to see all of the advertising that i do as providing like some sort of value on top of being an advertisement let me explain so a lot of the advertising that I do is me showing off the products that are in my repertoire and I have a release schedule um, of twice a week I'll make a post on Patreon and that will be cross posted in some way shape or form to my other social media. And so then those posts are advertisement for the sticker club but they're also like new content for people to enjoy. And it's the same when I'm sharing information about my sticker club throughout the month is I'll be like shooting footage or taking photos for my stories of me doing something in production for the sticker club so people are getting like this cool behind the scenes look at what i'm doing but they're also being reminded that the sticker club exists and i know that anything that comes off as an advertisement doesn't always get the engagement that you would get with something that was totally devoid of any i don't know strings attached but don't worry about it the people who it needs to reach it's gonna reach and at the end of the day you're not going to be converting new followers to patrons like immediately. Usually it's through that repeated exposure to the concept of what you're doing. And again, it's all about building that trust and showing people that they can invest in this sticker club safely. Slow growth is the goal here. I'm actually going to put up a graph here so you can see this is my lifetime patreon growth and like it's it's up and down so it goes it's on a generally upward trajectory and i think that this is income i don't really remember which poll this is oh and by the way if you're wondering about that little bit in the middle that was during the pandemic i had to like shut down the sticker club for a little while because like we was having some mental health issues but we're back we're better than ever and the next question is do i ever have slow months and i think you can see by this graph that like i say it isn't always up 
and sometimes it's due to the time of year like I feel this month has been kind of slow because it's the holiday season and people have to save their money they're thinking about next year they're like cutting back on it on some of the expenses that they've had and sometimes it's just the content of the month isn't super striking or maybe I did a really bad job of advertising it because there's, there is absolutely correlation between my advertising and my uh, intake of new patrons and on that note this isn't actually in the question here but I expect to see on the turnover month to month about a 20% loss of patrons I have around it's around 300 patrons right now oh, it's more like 10% I usually expect to see about 30 patrons of that drop down so I'll go from 300 to 270 maybe I mean it kind of depends honestly it hasn't been that much lately but it might be it's just the nature of it it's fine it's fine because if you do advertising throughout the month you will gain back those missing patrons and hopefully a little bit more at least that's the that's the general trend that I have been seeing this year okay we're getting into category two which is production how far in advance do I plan um in a perfect world I'd be like months and months planned in advance because the more bulk I can buy the better price I get for my products but realistically I want to have the if I'm running a theme poll I do it for the first two weeks of the month for the next month so first two weeks of November is the poll for December by the end of those two weeks I have my theme set from there on, uh, the first step is to do an idea generation, but I'll come up with all my ideas and then I will make sure that by the end of November, my sticker sheet for December is complete. But that's the only thing that I make sure to have complete in advance. All of the other rewards, it's okay for me to produce throughout the current month because I'm not gonna be revealing them right at the start of the month anyway. I'm gonna be like dosing them out as the weeks go on. And what do I do if I fall behind? Now, <laughs> I have not fallen behind that's like I know my deadlines and I dread the idea of people having to like wait really long for their stuff or to not even like know what reward they're getting I want people to know what to expect from me I want them to know that the new sticker sheet goes live on the first of the month I want them to know that every week they're probably gonna see another reveal I try and stay very on top of my scheduling for patreon content Again, that's all about building up that trust and rapport for people. It's important to me. What kind of uh, materials do I use? So when I do my sticker sheets, I now have them manufactured. I work with two different companies. One is here in Vancouver, Canada. The other is in China. So if I do have more time to get that delivery um, or I'm ordering in a larger bulk amount, I order from China because the cost is way, way better. But if I'm doing a shorter turnaround um, or something kind of specialty, then I'll get it done here in Vancouver because I know I'm going to have it within a week. But I do also make some stuff myself. So uh, if you don't know, I do two tiers of my subscription club. Um, there's the Lunchbox Club, which is just, just a sticker sheet every month. And then there's the Big Lunch Club, which is the sticker sheet plus a few extra goodies, aka the... 3D prints that you saw me making, those are for that tier of subscriber. And for that tier of subscriber, I'm hand making a lot of stuff because it keeps my costs down. It keeps me like in the game because I love making stuff. So I want to still have those tactile DIY elements to what I'm sending out. And for those things, I use uh, a Epson ET8500 printer and a Cricut Air. Without going into too much detail, I want to heavily recommend the Epson ET8500 printer. And I want to cautiously recommend the Cricut Air. The last thing that people ask me about is paper. Um, for my prints and printing, everything that I get is Epson brand paper that I just get from a local supplier. I get my sticker paper from onlinelabels.com. Um, I believe it's a weatherproof matte vinyl, something along those lines. I always have a box of that ongoing and anytime I need to make like short run stickers or stickers on the fly, that's what I'm using. Now, I really liked this next question is how much time do I spend uh, working on Patreon stuff in a month? So I actually sat down and did the math. <laughs> Ideation, five hours. That is doing research, which I use Pinterest for. Sketching, which is me doing sketching for concepts. Uh, I have kind of like this, mm, this document that is broken up into like sticker sheet, print, bonus sticker, bonus item, download like blah like so that I why am I having so much trouble explaining this so that I can have a map of what uh quantity and what items I'm going to be doing month on month and I'll sketch in all my ideas there and kind of get a brain map of like a holistic view of all the rewards that are going to go out 
from snack pack tier, so that's not even people who are getting mail, they're just getting like downloads and posts, to the big lunch who are getting the full suite. That takes about five hours. The next step is the sticker sheet. I think that takes about four hours. It's a little bit straightforward from getting it to the sketch to the print ready file. The sketch is probably the most tedious because I have my ideas and I'm kind of like stitching them all together and like moving them around and trying to get the placement right on the sheet. But then from there, I'm just inking and coloring and then lots of tweaking to the coloring too. Exporting it, making the cut lines, yada yada, all that fun stuff. Bonus items. So that's everything for the big lunch club. About 10 to 20 hours, which super depends on the complexity because some months I'll do like a comic <laughs> or like I did the Ghoul Scouts magazine. So that's a huge amount of work. Uh, and then some months I'm doing like a patch design and a bunch of bonus stickers, maybe a bookmark. So those are like a little bit on the less time consuming side of things. Next is ordering items and administration. I put five to 10 hours for that. So this is emails and managing communication with um, my subscribers because you know, they have questions or stuff went missing or like whatever it may be. Uh, prepping my posts for Patreon takes more time than you would think because I try and write nice copy for everything, make sure that like uh, all the photos are on point. That's like put photography in there too, um, recording video, stuff like that. So there is a lot of like extra stuff that I'm doing that's not just designing sticker sheets that I do factor into the Patreon time sync per month. And then lastly, there's production packing and shipping. And this can be between eight and 16 hours. I usually budget like two days to do all that stuff. And that includes making any handmade items. I'm trying to get it down to maximum one handmade item per month because whenever I have to do two, it's like, oh, it's really overwhelming the amount of like cutting and printing and stuff that I have to do. It's also writing the thank you notes, stuffing the, I was about to say stuffing the elephants. My God, stuffing the envelopes, buying the postage, yada, yada, all those steps. That comes out to 32 to 55 hours a month, which is not that bad, really. Um, it's spread out across pretty much the entire month. And considering how large of a part Patreon is of my business, I think that it's time well spent. Uh, but keep in mind that again, <laughs> I'm operating like a pretty big, there's a lot going on with what I'm doing. So I think you can expect much less time, think like, 20 hours a month you could probably get it down to if you're just starting out or um still building up your supporter base wow that was a long question next one how do i set up my files setting up files for print is pretty straightforward here's the rule 300 dpi or above for print always and then from there you just set it to whatever size your print is going to be so my sticker sheets are four by six inches so my file is four by six inches at 300 dpi and then what I will do is add a little bit around the edge for bleed just so that when the um, sticker people are like cutting the outside, there's like a little bit of trim that can be cut off. And then with my file setup for the sticker sheets, I have a base layer that's the background. So that's the background color and any elements um, on the sticker sheet that aren't actually going to be like a peelable sticker. And then the stickers are floating on a layer above that. And then on the third layer, there's kind of an outline of where the kiss cut of the sticker is going to be. We just have a couple more questions left, so let's rip through these. How many stickers can I put on one sheet? I am always pushing the envelope, so I used to work with a different supplier that had pretty large restrictions of like how far apart the stickers actually needed to be on the page. But now, I seem to be able to get away with some pretty close, tight sticker <laughs> placement. So I think I've gotten up to like 19 stickers on a sheet before. It's really fun to kind of have some big ones and some little ones and some super little ones. I know when I'm stickering things. I like to have little ones to kind of like fill gap areas, but you can pretty much do whatever you want. Just look into what your particular supplier's limitations are for the size of the stickers on the sheet and the distance they need to be apart from each other. And if you follow that rule, you'll be golden. Okay, the last thing that we're gonna go over, and I'm so sorry because this is the worst, is shipping. People have a lot of questions about shipping. I still have a lot of questions about shipping. I still find out new things about shipping every year. And the one thing that I know about the sticker club is the only way that it is sustainable is to be able to ship via letter mail. I live in Canada, so I'm shipping internationally from Canada. Even within Canada, if I was to send it as a parcel and not a letter, I'd be looking at $10 shipping minimum. And when my sticker sheet tier is 10 US dollars, there's that's just not gonna happen. So I make sure that all of my parcels can be uh, just stamped, which means they have to have pretty much entirely paper products on the inside. Sometimes I'll push the envelope a little bit, haha, <laughs> get it, envelope, and put a, um, a patch in, but I'll kind of try and sandwich it between paper goods so they don't notice. 
hi USPS, please don't come for me. And that means that my shipping cost is between 90 cents Canadian to $2.71 Canadian because that's the international and domestic cost of a stamp. And those are for parcels under 30 grams, pretty lightweight, but my envelopes with just a sticker sheet on the inside are like less than 10 grams. So I know that all of those people in the lunchbox club, I'm gonna be able to send them their parcels for just a regular stamp. And then when it comes to the big lunch club, um, I do sometimes end up having to use the slightly oversized mail stamps, which start at $1.30 Canadian and go to, I wanna say it's like $3.90 for international. And those would only ever be for the $25 tier. So I still have some wiggle room in terms of like not spending all of my like income on <laughs> shipping and fulfilling the orders. But you do want to get yourself a handy dandy little kitchen or shipping scale so you can use that to weigh your envelope so you know how much postage to use. And I always do all that stuff at home too. So like I just buy stamps en masse, bring them back here, stick them all on, and then dump the finished product with my post office when they're all ready to go. Know your production costs, know your shipping costs, keep a spreadsheet. It's not gonna hurt. I'm not very good at my spreadsheet keeping, but at least I know like generally how much money I'm spending versus how much I'm taking in. And I'll leave you on that note. The uh, My expected expenses for production and shipping are 30% of the money that I take in. So my profit margins are pretty low on the sticker club. That's why it's very important for me to be pinching as many pennies as I possibly can. But at the end of the day, it's a labor of love. It's working really well for me. I don't know what I would do <laughs> if I didn't have the, the support on Patreon like month to month. I would probably be doing something entirely different. So shout outs to all of you. If you're watching and you're a patron, you can know you are doing me one hell of a solid. And I hope that every package that you receive sparks so much joy. But otherwise, uh, that's gonna be it for this vlog because I know it's gonna be really long. I'm gonna probably take anything that I do today, roll it into the next three days, and I will see you guys in the next Vlogmas vlog. Bye. Beep, 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 beep. I live in the city. The city is loud. <laughs>